For this next bit, we're going to make a function in Octave, and I'm going to grab this column of data back from the Houston data. So I have another sheet that is a very long column of data, and I'm going to want to do things like find the average, standard deviation, min, max. So I have a, a nice data set there. Okay, once again, I'm going to list out the files just so I can copy and paste this um, name. And I'm going to go ahead and say, I'll call this H2, Houston2 equals XLS read. And there's my file name. And this was in sheet three of that file. So let's see if I can read this data in. Yeah, there it is. So H2, I've got this huge, let's see how long it is, 2,000 data points in here. And um, Octave has a few built-in functions to find like the mean of this data or standard deviation of this data. But I thought it would be fun to go through and actually make our own function like this where we could send our function a data set and have it calculate something. So let's go ahead and make something that, um, I'll do one that calculates the average. So it's always good to start out with some kind of comment line. We're gonna want to save this somewhere. I'll go ahead and save it in that same, um, path name over here, and we'll call this average, I guess, because we'll calculate the average. And notice that right now, well, let's let's write the, the function first. So here we go, function, I'll call it AV for average. And we're going to need to send it some kind of vector, and it's going to hopefully spit out the average of that vector. So we have our function named. I'll go ahead. Let's say the average starts with zero and we'll loop through and grab each of these elements. So we're gonna go from one to the length of whatever vector it sends to us. And we'll say A is equal to, so we're just adding the entire thing together here. And then after the entire thing is added together, I'll say average is equal to A divided by the length. And so that should, should spit out here our average. So let me make sure that this is saved. Okay, so right now it doesn't have anything to call it. But if I say average and we send it that data set, hey, 38.462. And that's the same thing that um, Octave was calculating. So woohoo, we get a function to work. Let's see if we can make a new function that outputs more than just the average. So this one, maybe we can calculate min, max, average. We'll see how far we get. And we'll start out again as a function, only this time because we're outputting more than one thing we will set up a little vector here. Give everything a descriptive title. Let's see, what should we call this? How about min, max, average? That's probably too long of a name, but we'll remember what order everything's in for that. Okay, so what should we start with? Let's call We'll have to have some starting point for the average. 
and a starting point for min. Now this isn't the first element in that array is not the min or the max, but this will just give it a, a starting point here. And we'll have something similar that we did before. So let's go ahead and do a for loop. I, and we'll start with element number two and go all the way to the end of whatever vector we send it. To find the average, we have to add everything up. So I'll do that first. So we're just going to add element after element after element. And then as we get to each element, we'll say if this element is less than min, then we'll reassign our minimum to that element. Okay. Else if this element is maybe larger than the maximum, so you see where this is going, then we'll say max is equal to this element. And then we can say end if. Probably good to keep everything spaced so we can see what goes with what. So that's the end if. We also have to end the for loop. And after we go through the entire loop, we need to calculate the average. So Average is equal to A, which was adding just the summation of everything. Okay, so now we have something for min, something for max, and we have an average calculated for this. So I'll go ahead and save this. And we'll call this um, min max average. I'm saving it in that same that same data set. So now if I say min max average equals min max average h2, let's see what it spits out. Woohoo! So we have the minimum, the maximum, and the average. We have three outputs coming out of the function now. We can get even fancier and do the standard deviation. Let's call this STDEV. It's a little bit different name than what Octave does it. And, and Octave already does calculate all this stuff, but it's kind of fun to see what, what equation goes into it. So I'm going to start out with st equals zero, and we'll do another for loop here. For i equals one to the length of x, st equals st plus. So standard deviation, it's kind of um, an a squared plus b squared equals c squared sort of a deal. You're looking at the scatter of the data. So you're trying to kind of quantify that difference between each data point and where the average is. The very end, I'll show you the equation for this thing. Okay, so we're adding together for each of them the difference between where each data point is and the average, and we're squaring it. And then at the very end, the standard deviation is equal to the square root of, of all these guys added together divided by the number of data points minus 1. And we're going to take the square root of all of that. So let's go ahead and see if this works. I'm actually going to just copy and paste this out of here. Control C, Control V. 
And instead of X, I'm going to grab that big long data set that we had. So let's see. Yay! And if we check to see if we got the right answer, we did. And again, that was that that huge data set that we had. So it took all of those numbers and it found the min, the max, the average, and the standard deviation for all of it.